Hello, I'm Wendy and this is Summer Bay Studio. Today I'm working on an, another couple of pages in my altered book journal. It's, it's coming along amazingly well. It's filling up. Um, I don't have that many pages left to do in it, but I've got a couple here where there's three pages in a row and I've decided to do all three of them at once. So that's what I'm working on today and I think you'll find it fun. I'm using mixed media. I'm using paint, paper, glue, ephemera, odds and ends, and surprises. So let's see. These are the pages that I'm working on. So I have three in a row here and then there's something on this side and something on on this side plus there's an extra in here that I'm going to do another time. But I thought I would start here and I've pulled out a few little things that I'm going to use. Well, I think I might use and, you know, we'll see because that's how these things go. Sometimes it's, you know, you just have surprises and that's a good thing. So there's my flowers just to dress things up a little bit. And I'm starting out by using some gesso and I'm going to paint on this page because I want to sort of um, just fade out what's on here. This one I, I don't think I will do because I have another plan for it and this one I will also do um, at least part of. So to begin with I'm just going to take my brush and wet it and then just squeeze the water out of it. Make sure it's got it's just damp it just needs to be damp. And my gesso is a white gesso, so it actually does cover up the print. Not completely, but that's that's fine. I don't really need it to be covered up completely. I just want to kind of fade it out so that it's if you if you're holding the book, you're not tempted to just read the the story and then you'd be frustrated because you couldn't finish it and it's a kind of a funny old book anyway it was published in the 1950s and it's called um, a station wagon in Spain I think I came by it from my parents bookshelves which had plenty of old books on them and I've had it for years and have actually I read the book and kind of got a kick out of it because it's kind of quirky. I'm just going to put this under here so that I can paint right off the edge, therefore have continuity. And same down here. Let's get this right off the edge. Now what will happen with this page is that when it, whenever you put something wet on paper, it pretty much will always buckle the paper and how much it buckles depends on how wet it is and also how heavy the paper is. So if I were using 300 pound watercolor paper I'd have to get it very soggy before it would buckle the paper but this is obviously pretty light paper so it's going to be a bit of a problem. Now what to do with this in the meantime I'm going to put the fan on here. I've got this little fan and I'm going to put it on so that it starts to dry this page right away. And hopefully it will be dry enough so I can just hold the center page up and not to, not worry too much about them getting all stuck together because gesso actually dries kind of chalky so I don't have to worry about, about it being um, sticky like acrylics, even though it is an acrylic. And I'm trying to give it a fairly decent coating so that it pretty much obliterates all that type. But having it show through a bit is actually kind of charming, I think. It makes it seem a little bit mysterious, maybe? So how, how is everyone today? We've had beautiful weather here. It's summer at the time of this recording and I love summer and I'm just really enjoying this. The only thing I don't like is, you know, the sound of lawn mowers and the sound of an air conditioner. But the, I'm thankful enough for the air conditioner that I'm really not going to make 
a big deal about that because we've had some super hot weather and it's really nice to have the AC. Okay, so I've got that page done and I might have to do some kind of architectural thing just to stand this these pages up, this middle page up, because this one isn't dry yet. Okay, my pages are really dry now and I'll get that out of the way. This one got a bit of a fold but that's not going to last. So these are, are perfectly dry so I'm going to move ahead with it. To start with I want to put uh, a pocket in here and I'm going to use this paper because I really like it and I think I will just tear it down here so that we've got a rough edge but I want to measure first how long, what size I want it to be. So it has to start there and I want it to end before we get to the corner because when you try and tuck it into the corner it never really works all that well. And one thing I've learned about tearing is that depending on which way you tear you see the white paper. See how it's white there? If I tear it this way, if I tear it this way then you don't get that. So I'm just going to head in the general direction here of my other little tear and hope that I, I kind of get there. It wants to go off and a little farther but that's all right we can fix that quite easily by tearing it this way some more like that that's perfect now I want to distress this and I want to use a green a greenish and I have all these little pots of stamp pads. I think that one will work well. I have several here actually. That one is better. It's hard to tell actually. They're pretty good. They do like to fall open though. I'll stick with this one. And just do all these, these edges. I think that's effective. Now I could use the, the vintage photo one and I still might on something else but for this one I wanted to do just, just to sort of give some contrast with the background. Not that there isn't any, it's just it's sort of a finishing touch. Like that. Then I'm going to take this and using this art glitter glue, which has a nice pointy nozzle that keeps getting plugged up. I need to have a little thing that actually unplugs it when you put the lid on. I'm not really sure where to get that. I suppose I could just put that pin in it and make that be the cap. Let's just place this here, press that down along where the glue is. I'm going to wipe this glue off and the pin because there's probably a chance I'll need to use it again. Let's see if that'll stay there. Um, now I also want to add something here and I've picked out a couple of flowers that I think will go That interferes, I think. It doesn't work so well. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm in love with that. Don't think so. I also have this, which I like a lot better. And this is um, one of my own designs. And this is printed on sticker paper. So I'm just going to cut it between the, the hearts like that. Then try and separate it from its background or its backing paper. There, that was easier than I anticipated. This way I can cover up the number 24. 
and the colors actually coordinate with this. I need to get some the sticker paper that isn't so shiny because I don't always want it to be really shiny. Now I want something that will go in here and I've picked out a couple of little things and I think I'll do this one in in this pocket here because the colors go but first I want to glue it down to this paper and I chose this paper because it has it has numbers on it so it's oh it doesn't on that side it needs to go on the other side so that it's like this and then it can be like a list so I need to position it so that it uh, is nice and straight along there so let's just put the glue on it and then line it up because I don't want the back to show there's no it has no purpose in the journal so I might as well make it usable for a journaler that is to give you a place to write all right let's see here just turn this over very carefully place it right along this line at the top that way it'll be pretty even throughout spread that around I'm just going to let that one dry a little bit. And this one, I want the same thing. So these numbers, 1, 2, whatever it is, 17, will go on the back of the piece. So I'm going to put it on this side, and then I'll cut them both out. That way, it gives two journal cards. And these are just pictures that I cut out of books. I went to a used bookstore and looked at all their illustrated books that I could find and came up with these and this one is from a cookbook that was completely illustrated. I'm going to put this right on the very edge as close as I can get and right up there on that line like that and then I need just a little tissue here. This is my handy dandy tissue and I want my glue paper here so that I can wipe off the stuff that squirts out the edges. Also just press it down really well. There. Perfect. So I'm going to just cut these out with scissors. I have a cutter but sometimes it's easier just to use scissors to do it. Especially on small pieces like this. And this one came from a Cicely Mary Barker Flower Fairies book. And I ordered a few of those online, used books, and I found a few of them locally, actually. I found actually a bunch of them locally, which was handy. And here where I live, there's this town with two used bookstores in it that are both really good. Plus some thrift stores and whatnot, which is a little bit harder to find things like this in. Now I don't think I need these anymore, so I'm going to tuck them away again. I don't think I'm going to use those colors. I think instead I'm going to use this one. And I have the little spongy thing to make it work. So that looks nice. And I chose this one because the colors of the, the pink and the green kind of go with the, the paper that I made the pocket out of. Now this glue is still a little bit soft, but I'm going to tuck this in here anyway. And I might put something on the front here. What did I do with that rose? like that. There's another one here. A uh, bit of a clash, I think. This one kind of works. What else have I got here? I did get out a few different things. That's very sweet. I don't think I'm going to end up using those roses. I think I need something else on here. 
So let's see what we can find. Something that doesn't get lost in it. I might use that because then that could be another pocket. Yeah, I think that'll work. It doesn't get lost in the print. Or as they say, it doesn't fight with it. All right, let's do this. This one actually has some some kind of distressing along the edges anyway, but a little more isn't going to hurt anything. So I'll just pop this around the edges. I'd like to get a darker brown because sometimes it's it's uh, this one's a little bit a sort of green brown. I don't know. Yeah, I'll do that. I like, I like all the activity. In the art world, we call that visual activity. And I have had books from the library about minimalist living. Let me tell you, it is not for me. I like visual activity far too much to go minimal in my house or anywhere. So because of that, I have to be pretty darn organized. There, look at this. I like that. And cut out some little pieces of paper from this old book. I kind of like that. Or this one. I like that one, Once Upon a Time. But first, I want to get something to put in this. And I've got these tickets. So if I put that in there, then it would make this kind of redundant. So let's see. I can't see I like oil on top there. Not sure what that's supposed to mean. I think that one looks good. I like the little bunny. Fact. Let's just get these out of the way. I have to keep telling myself, put things away as you go, and then you won't have to have such a big cleanup afterwards. Now, I have something for this. I've got that, and I've got these Peter Rabbit things. So I'm going to put one of these little little rabbits on here in the back. Like that. So it will be about there. I think that's pretty cute. And I think it will fit on this little block. This is a nice permanent archival ink. It's waterproof, so even if it gets wet, it doesn't go anywhere. See how nice that is? Wow. It's just a little surprise, actually. Like, who was expecting to have another rabbit on the back? Right? All right, I'm going to let that dry. And on this page, I'm going to make another pocket. And I think what I'm going to do is fold this over like this. And use my bone folder to get a nice sharp edge. Now I'm debating about whether to take this off and put that on because I don't, I, it doesn't really need to be triple thick here. I think I will do that. I think I'm going to cut this off. Because the bottom edge is going to be tacked down anyway. Okay, let's yank that out of there and do this one. The fact that it's folded is making this part triple thick anyway, so it really doesn't need to be even more so. Oh, 
All right, Got a little bit of glue squirting out here. Seepage or squirtage, I'm not really sure which. And then this is going to go in the pocket or one of these pockets anyway. Now this one can go here. So what I want to do first is glue the flap down. I guess it did get a little bit of paint on it. So that goes down like that. I wonder if I should have done this edge. I kind of think so. I might want to think this ahead of time. I really don't know. I get excited and start, you know, going a little bit crazy. So I'm going to just pull it up. Because I can always glue it down again. It'll stick, it's still sticky. Like that. Okay, let's do this one. While I'm thinking of it this time, this one also is, is quite distressed, quite old looking. And I can't tell you where I found it because I can't remember. There's just too many. I've, tried, I've cut out so many different ephemera pieces. I found some free online, I bought some online. And printed it and that sort of thing so this one I want to have I want to actually cut this little corner off don't need that that way I can put this here and it'll cover up that corner okay to make sure I've got the right sides that I'm working with here nice rounded corners which are, are really nice. I like rounded corners on things because they I just find them kind of elegant. So this will come up over this bottom edge here which I think looks great. So that makes a pocket in here and a pocket in here and this can go probably in here and then I might put another one of these in here. Actually, I really want to decorate this. So what will I do? Oh, that's really sweet. And then I could put this guy up here. That's really sweet as well. Okay, decision made. So even if they get covered up, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Because when you take out the, the little piece that's in the pocket, then you get this little surprise. All right, this one. Go right there. And this is from um, Edith Holden's book. I got, I got a birthday book that was my mother-in-law's and husband said, I don't want that thing. I said, good, I'll take it. And then we'll put this little sparrow up in this corner here. So I can get it off here without losing too much glue to my fingers. There, it can just go right there like that. This little card, wait, I'll let that dry first. This one is, I think, dry now. So this guy goes in here. This one goes in here. This one, this one goes in here. I kind of want something on that. Let's put some words there. Put one of these little words. Like that. That's nice. I like it. The thing about these paper projects is that they're just really fun.
and creative. So this is going to show in the, on the little card once it's in the pocket. And this can go in here. And I just need one for this part here. So let's see what we have. I'm wondering if one of these little cards, just to have sort of continuity, doesn't, doesn't, isn't just the perfect thing. Yep, that works. The sayings on these things are unusual. Something like this in here that has a space in the top. I can put another rabbit in there. I like that idea. do that in a moment. First I want to distress the edges of this. I should do the other one as well, shouldn't I? I will do that as well. Because this makes for a journaling spot. I will ink out again. And let's get this inked up. It inks so well. I've had a few trials and errors with inking. I just put her right there and hold her for a second. That one turned out quite well. I think what I'll do is put one of the other little bunnies here on the back or something. A carrot, a leaf, a... Uh, what is that? Oh, a hedgehog. I like the carrot. Let's just go with the carrot. I don't know that it goes with birds and everything else, but cute is cute. Can't get away from that. Alright. Let's try and make a complete success of this one. Perfect. It's just perfect. And I love it. And my carrot can go back on here. This can get put away. I'm not going to use that after all. Because it just didn't seem to fit at the, at the you know the time when it came down to it. And this can go in here. Right like that. This can go over here. So there's our finished product and it didn't really take all that much time. What the steps were, I painted these two pages with gesso, leaving that one not painted, folded it over, cut it off, made a pocket out of it, tore this piece of green and pink and put it in here, made a pocket out of it, um, used this from my, um, my borders set that's on my store at Summer Bay Studio to top this made a, a list kind of page for um, journaling on. And then this one also has some space to write on. It's just so darling, so cute. And over here we have another journal page, front and back, or a journal card. And we've got the little, little sparrow in the corner there. That can actually tuck in so we can see that little guy. And these little chickadees and sparrows, whatever they are, blue tits I guess. And another pocket here. And I'm all finished. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to. I'd really like that. And please leave a comment. Um, if you've got other ideas you'd like to see or things that you'd see, like to see me do differently, I'd love to hear about it. And I'll see you next time.